Well, hello, welcome back to the Chelsea Academy Challenge here on FM22 as we attempt to dominate football with an academy focused transfer policy. Last time we started things off in our first season sluggishly with a horrendously compressed fixture list which left everyone exhausted and us 8 points off the top. But we ended the year strongly and we won the Club World Cup, which is basically impossible for me, so it was quite good. Today we will finish our debut campaign with 4 more trophies still theoretically up for grabs, provided the fitness holds up. We begin the year at home to Arsenal, keen for revenge as they actually beat us early on in the season despite having an awful campaign and having already dispensed with Mikel Arteta. We start off perfectly with Mason Mount dispatching at the near post, in the second half a precise ball finds Lukaku who continues his exceptional form and then seals the deal with a penalty. Not a bad way to start things off and it gets even better as Liverpool finally lose for the first time all season. This means we're now only 5 points behind and then they lose again. Now obviously the transfer window is open but I'm not intending on doing much business. I don't really ever really like doing much in January really. Although pre-contracts are of course worth looking at given we can of course sign free transfers. But they are also a problem for us as Antonio Rudiger who has been a rock at the back is of course available for free and is still point blank refusing refusing to sign a new deal. I was hoping he would change his mind, but alas, no. The inevitable is at least swiftly confirmed as he agrees to join Bayern Munich in the summer for a lower wage than the one he's already on with us. This game is weird sometimes. We could sell him to them now, but we might as well make the most of him while we have him. And he's not the only one attracting interest as PSG come in for Andreas Christensen who wants to join them, which is absolutely not happening as he's an academy graduate, so pretty integral to the challenge. And then Newcastle bid for Trevor Chalobah. I mean, sorry, can you just leave my centre-backs alone, please? And we've already agreed to sell Thiago Silva to Real Madrid from last time. Oh, and then Chalobah demands a new contract with a locked-in promise of a role we don't even use. Fantastic. We begin a cup triple header, which is a perfect chance to rest the first 11. First is a 2-0 win over Watford in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. We then breeze past Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup and then seal our place in the Carabao Cup final with a 1-1 draw in the second leg to face Leicester at Wembley. A comprehensive 4-0 win over Manchester City then follows with even Timo Werner managing to keep his composure, but then we face Liverpool still level with Man United and 5 points behind them, so a win would be nice. And by nice, I mean absolutely essential to our title challenge. We've been without several key players due to international action, so this is going to be tough. And that difficulty only increases as N'Golo Kante goes off injured early on. It's a tense game, but we push forwards more and more as the game goes on and always look likeliest to grab a winner. But we can't find a way through and then in injury time, Andy Robertson scores a fluke wonder goal and we lose. Because obviously... The performance was good, but this result is pretty cataclysmic for our title hopes, so, you know, not great really. And it's our first home league defeat too. Oh, and then the club captain just agrees to join PSG in the summer, so this month is turning out great. But we bounce back with a 3-0 win over Leeds, and then a 3-0 win over Burnley, and we end the month with an uneventful transfer window conclusion, which is a relief. A Romelu Lukaku penalty is the difference as we make it past Man United in the FA Cup 4th round. The board seem pretty content overall, although hopefully they don't notice that our highest performing player is leaving on a free transfer. Lukaku bags a brace in the League Cup final dress rehearsal, reaching 30 for the season as we look to consolidate second place. Man United then beat Liverpool to give our title ambitions some renewed hope, which we then immediately chuck in the bin by somehow contriving to lose to Brighton. Mendy was poor for both goals, while having a centre-back partnership of a guy who's leaving and a guy who won to leave might not be the best idea. For the first leg of our Champions League knockout match in the snow of Kiev, we do the same thing again, dominating, then losing 2-1. Absolutely awful and the perfect preparation for a literal cup final. But at least a certain Dane decides that actually maybe the side who won the Champions League last season are a big club worth staying at as opposed to a team who we literally sent back into the Europa League earlier on in this one. Anyway, we face Leicester for the Carabao Cup, as full strength as we've been in weeks. We look for an early goal and well, how about this? Mason Mount, take a bow, son. One of the greatest goals I've ever seen on FM. We're at it again shortly after as Jorginho finds Kai Havertz to rifle home a second. It's apparently his first goal of the season. He's been very solid, but clearly not in front of goal. One man who is, though, is Lukaku, who makes it three before the break. Jamie Vardy pulls a goal back, but it proves to only be a consolation as an own goal and Lukaku again makes it five. Leicester do get a second, but it means nothing as we make it trophy number two the save already. A great performance to end a briefly dodgy run. 
The board are pleased, although I'm not exactly feeling secure given our distance from first place in the league. Our FA Cup run continues with a routine win over Sheffield United in the fifth round. We then have two away games where we absolutely need to win. We just about beat Southampton 1-0 but lose Kante for six crucial weeks in the process. We then come from behind to beat Newcastle. We're solidly second but eight points behind with nine to go will require a total collapse from Liverpool coupled with us simultaneously not shooting ourselves in the foot which is about 0% likely. We get our first youth intake and it's not as bad as it appeared from the preview. Brian Dolker and Tyler McMahon enemy are the two standouts. Our bid to overturn our 2-1 deficit to Dinamo Kiev gets off to a good start through Kai Havertz and as soon as the second goal goes in the job is done. Our award is Monaco in the quarterfinals which could be worse. And speaking of quarterfinals, our FA Cup one goes well as we see off Reading to reach the semi-finals where we'll play Brighton. I certainly can't complain about our cup draw luck, although saying that we did literally just lose to Brighton, so what am I talking about? We get the next gen Golden Boy Award thing and Holzek and Conchow both make the top 50, which is nice. Antonio Rudiger is rewarded for his excellent form with Player of the Month for March, which he dedicates to me. You know what, Antonio, I would much rather you'd have just signed a new contract instead, but hey, what do I know? An even game at Old Trafford ends 1-1, which should at least consolidate second place, before we get a narrow 1-0 win away from home against Monaco. Norwich go down 3-1, and then Liverpool get smashed for three by Brentford to maybe open the door a tiny bit. We're still seven points behind, so probably not, but we do have a very decent run-in. The second leg against Monaco is is, well, we concede after half time as Myron Bodo walks his through but looks set for the win as Christian Pulisic gets his first goal of the season with a fine move. Then, as I've used all the subs and we can't take off a clearly flagging Lukaku, he gives the ball away and Bodo scores again with 30 seconds left to force extra time. Thank God they scrapped away goals. We apparently don't get an extra time sub for some reason, which is terrible because Lukaku is practically dead at this point. And despite absolutely dominating, the game goes to penalties. I thought we'd left stuff like this back on FM21. Surprisingly though, we are actually quite good at penalties as we score all six. Mendy doesn't really get close to anything though and it's only when Tuchemni hits the bar that we go through. And our reward is of course Liverpool because I wasn't sick enough of them already. We go to Wembley to face Brighton and it's a great performance from the second string. Two from Werner and then Adam Holzek seals the deal with an exquisite finish to ensure we'll be playing almost the maximum possible number of games you can in a single season. It definitely would be terrible if, say, a World Cup was just shoved into the middle of next season causing further fixture congestion issues because these guys are all knackered. Oh, and let's see, yep, our FA Cup final opponents will be Liverpool because no matter how good you are, someone else is always there too. We obliterate Spurs with another Lukaku hat-trick before putting four past Villa, and then Liverpool lose. Repeat, Liverpool lose, and the gap is suddenly down to four. Surely not. If we can knock them out of the Champions League, that would surely not help their morale or form. We're as full strength as we can be for the home leg, and we have so many chances. It feels like it's going to be a repeat of the league game, but after Trent Alexander-Arnold gets sent off, finally, in the 93rd minute, Timo Werner is the hero as we grab a 1-0 win. And with the title race heading to the wire, Liverpool's morale is now in the absolute mud as they lose again to Manchester City and then Kai Havertz bags a brace as we relegate Crystal Palace and go just one point behind. Surely we can't pull this off. We are at least competing now though so the sack seems unlikely as we secure Champions League qualification. We enter the end game with three trophies up for grabs still. And we start with prizes. Romelu Lukaku gets player of the month for April and would you look at who gets manager of the month. Our semi-final lead over Liverpool is slender but it looks like it will be enough. That is until the 75th minute when they score. Then they score again and as we press for an equaliser they make it three. And we're out. I don't think that that's particularly fair but hey, it's football. At least we're maintaining the board expectations. We need to keep going in the league but we can only draw at home to Wolves despite absolutely dominating which pretty much ends our title chances. But at least we get to go top temporarily but it is extremely brief as Liverpool beat Newcastle and the gap goes back to three points. Oh, and then Kai Havertz gets ruled out for the rest of the season. Fantastic. We beat Everton in a tense game, but Liverpool win again as well. And while we then breeze past Watford, Liverpool beat Burnley. We've managed to take it to the final day, but we need a win and for them to lose. Speaking of final days, the FA Cup final is actually first for some reason, and indeed it's on a Wednesday for some reason as well. This has been our most settled side towards the back half of the season, with Barkley filling in for the injured Havertz. 
Let's go. Can we make it a treble of sorts? It's not a great start as Jorginho, for some reason, forgets which team he plays for and Mane scores. Then nothing really happens until late in the second half as Lukaku misses a sitter and then Werner comes on and does Werner things. And then again. And then we lose. Have I mentioned my hatred for Liverpool Football Club on FM? Because it's significant. Five matches this season, four defeats, and the only win didn't actually matter. Ah well, we could still maybe win the league. We have to beat West Ham and hope Liverpool lose to a Champions League chasing Leicester. West Ham get an early red card while Liverpool take an early lead, which they then double, so it's not looking likely. Rudiger gives us the lead in his final game with a ridiculous 17th of the season. Barkley makes it two in the second half before Lukaku brings up an absurd 45 goals for himself. But it's all about Leicester. They manage to pull a goal back, but the hope swiftly dies as Liverpool make it three. And that's that. We win, but Liverpool win the title. Leicester costing themselves Champions League qualification at the last once again. 89 points but it's not enough. We lost fewer games and conceded fewer goals than anyone else, so it's quite frustrating, but this is a long-term save, so there will be other chances. But this may have been the best one. If we'd just beaten Liverpool at Stamford Bridge, we'd be champions. Oh well. It has been a great season overall though. Two trophies, although the game seems to have forgotten about the Club World Cup. Our team of the year is as expected. An incredible year from James, Chilwell, Lukaku and Mount. And the soon to be sadly missed Rudiger, who wins the club's Player of the Year award. Our late title surge pleased the board and it secures our job and they only want the same again next year. Lukaku's 32 Premier League goals are only enough for second place in the Golden Boot, but Rhys James wins the Young Player of the Year. Mendy comes second for the Golden Glove, and then, well, we win Manager of the Year. Quite why, I don't know. Harsh on Jurgen Klopp, but thanks. Lukaku, Havertz, Kante and Rudiger make the overall Premier League Team of the Year as well. So certainly a good place to start from. There are some issues. The training facilities are downgraded and the board refused to improve them, and we are losing two key players for free. But let's not think about that now. Liverpool lose the Champions League final, so that's a plus. It could be a busy summer, and who knows what next season will bring.